everyone. How's everyone doing? Yes, I posted the wrong. <laughs> We're starting now, but we really start in an hour. Kidding. Everyone doing okay? Yeah, okay. So we had a stop hunt here. So far, it looks like it without going for the grand prize stop in yen. So surprised it didn't take this out at 29. I'm not sure what the spike was about happened here with the S&Ps too. Same type of candle right here. Okay. So both the N and S&Ps. Threatening. I uh, had a little pullback on the turnaround Tuesday in S and P's, and uh, we've retraced right back there. Uh, as you can tell, on most time frames, even if we make a new high, and some people are looking for, you know, the 80 handle in there. Uh, I was looking mid 70s, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, still, euro, euro, you know, trying to grind it out, but. I'm going to wait for this to get long euro. So down in here, 83.58. So maybe another 40 pips. I'll try it down here. Still think something like this is developing and there could be one more wave. To the upside. I know I'm talking slow. Here's your channel. So we'll see if this speed line down here holds it. I'll attempt it with stops under the low. <clears throat> it's taken a long time, you know, and this goes against my teachings. It, it is a confirmed low on the daily. So I'm going to be paying attention to Euro pound down here. Probably just go with the Euro pound. I mean, let's face it, Euro's making new lows, right? So why isn't Euro pound making new lows with it? That's a little bit of a market tell. You know, I wouldn't bet the farm on it, but it's a, you know, kind of a message that Euro pound's not making a new low with Euro pound having made, uh, taken out the same low from here. Is that true? Well, we haven't quite done it here either. Okay. I think this is a pullback uh, that we're getting here in Canada that should most likely be bought, okay? This was your breakout. Here's your weekly. Not much follow through on this breakout though. You know, I you know, ever have a morning like this, hi Brock, David, where I'm doing this, I'm, you know, I'm scanning all different things. Uh, gold still looks kind of weak to me. It was ahead for my yen, but at the same time, I still am going with this uh, thesis that 10 year yields haven't bottomed yet. And, you know, maybe we're going to get an ABC up here. Then the market blows and the end blows one more time. But we weren't that far away from these lows at 143, um, I'm still uh, in the camp that we're gonna take it out. And the 30 year is looking a little weaker. People are starting to talk about inversions on different <clears throat> time frames. And here's TLT. I still think this breakout is okay. And here, you know, maybe we get an ABC here too, but I think new highs are destiny, but you know we could pull back here if the S and P's blow again towards uh, thirty-three eighty-five or so. Uh, but anyway, what I was talking about is I don't see anything that is that compelling to me. So what do I do in a situation like that? You know, the pound. When you look at the pound on the daily. 
it still looks pretty good. You know, you look at it on the one hour, and of course, it looks much better than the euro. But, you know, this move up here in cable before we started correcting, it was a confirmed high. So the implications are there's another high coming above this high. And perhaps this is one, two, and we get a three up here. So, uh, but, you know, just all the uncertainty and news, maybe that's why it is a good buy because it's hard to do it in front of all the uh, flux about Brexit. And, you know, you can't get uh, a permit to dump your garbage, um, you know, and all the things that have to be worked out between Europe and the UK. So a great thing about the team concept is that I don't really have to know what to do all the time because of all of these people, right? So if I don't have any ideas and perhaps I don't have clarity on my screen, all I have to do is start looking at the work of these, these guys here, you know, Go and see Paulie in the morning, look at his bias sheet. He always has ideas or at least uh, important areas where markets are going to react, technical spots where you can get rejections and bounces off of. So there's always something to do. Um, but, you know, I just still have to admit I feel a little uncomfortable when I don't know what to do. So... It's great being part of a team. Okay, so see, the team knows what to do. I mean, they have uh, some patterns in play that are working. CAD Yen, CAD, Aussie, Yen, Euro. <clears throat> anyway, plenty of ideas and the reasons why, and then you could always just see what everyone's thinking here. So here's the thinking on CAD Yen. I think, yeah, looks like Rega stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> if you're drawing a blank any day, being part of this is gonna give you lots of ideas and things to consider. You don't take anyone's trade blindly. You, you're a discretionary trader, so have it line up with your work. And with that being said, you know, not a real high risk to uh, risk a buck here if you're new. And try us out for 10 days. And that way you get everything or you could always go with our light, Forex Analytics light. And then, of course, our sponsors will line you up with a broker if you're outside the U.S. to just through your normal course of doing business and trading can pay for the reimbursement of the cost of your subscription. And since I don't have anything real compelling to say this morning, I'm glad to turn it over. How to trade gold. You know, for, uh, 1550 is the key. Until they take out 1550, I still think there's a chance we blow one more time into the spring. And that's really based upon the bond. I haven't changed my story, Shahab. You've heard it, the narrative. It's all based upon yields. Right, so if yields are heading lower, that's still a decent environment for gold. But under 1550, you have to get out of the way. Yeah, I was waiting for one more shot down for XGAL. So if I get a little risk off in the next week or so, um, that'll take it. Looking at 48 bucks is uh, more interesting to me. And if I miss it, you know what? I miss trades every day, and there'll be another bus around the corner. How are you doing today, Blake? What do you have, about uh, three weeks left till you have to get up earlier again? Uh, you know, I guess I'm, you know, I'm not even paying you attention. think about that, dude. I'm not even paying attention right now, right. Uh, but I know it's, it's in coming. March. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's coming March. soon at the end of the month, and um, you, know you know how misery loves company. Oh yeah, I know you're gonna laugh all the next you know seven months <laughs> while I have to get up early with you. No, uh, I won't laugh. I'll <laughs> empathize. So um, so it, you know it's it's been I want to say it's been a fairly quiet market overnight, but actually we had some activity. Um, so the the euro dollar has just been you know very slow going. Um, if you read the blog. Uh, the chart of the day yesterday. I think there's a risk that the euro does bounce, but you know bounces should be fairly limited. I I'm not playing the euro, but I am watching it. Um, and the reason why I'm watching it is because I'm I'm long uh, the Aussie. I, I'm still short some dollar yen, which avoided my stops overnight. I'm, yeah, what was that big candle about? Uh, but just a, I think it was just a stop run. Okay, you know, I, I right. being that Better. that was just a stop run, but. I, I figured if we jammed up there, it would, uh, it, you know, if it was going to stall, it would stall ahead of 20. That's why my stops are above that. But um, I thought if it was going to run, you know, we're going to, we're going to make a run for, you know, um, 1080. 1080 or something. Yeah. So it, Thanks, it avoided bro. my stops. Now I'm not really too happy with being short the dollar yen. And matter of fact, I'm, I'm actually looking to cover because equities are just strong. I, yeah, mean, I thought I had it yesterday. Y yeah. I mean, you know, well, I think we have to go into some sort of acceleration phase in the S&P. I know I've said that for a long time, but it's either that or we just continue to grind higher. So, you know, um, the, the coronavirus can't even shake the stock market. So uh, I would assume that anybody who's short is going to get squeezed. And as we get squeezed in the equity markets, I think it's going to be some sort of acceleration phase. Uh, we are at 127% extension of the S&P. The 161% extension of, this is the coronavirus scare, if you will, uh, comes up at 34.12. So, and and actually, if you look at a, you know, you look at a weekly chart, let me go ahead and snap that back a little bit. A weekly chart, this also coincides, if I'm not mistaken, because I had deleted it, um, Oh, we're we're at the 161 percent extension of this this move lower, and let me let me go over to yeah this is a weekly, um yeah this is from the um the the sell off in 2018, so we have I, I think some you know well we're already in the overshoot um an overshoot situation, but. I think the 161 percent extension right here at 3,400 could very easily be tested, and maybe we can go even further than that. I mean, you know, why can't we accelerate uh, and 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 do a Tesla type of move in the equity markets? And and that's what I think is going to happen is we're going to see Tesla is a very much like to me a very much uh, much of a blow off top type of situation, um, but why can't the S and P's do something like this where we're currently somewhere around here? you know, or maybe, you know, somewhere around here in the S and P where we can see that type of, uh, type of move, uh, an acceleration where we get a, you know, spike up to 3,800 and then a spike down. And then we end up being right where we're at now, but that shakeout tends to, you know, deliver some sort of top. So because I feel that that is probably going to happen, at some point, whether it's today or tomorrow or next month or whatever, um, I, I don't want to really be short the dollar yen at this moment. I'm 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 short, but I'm going to be looking for the exits uh, at some point today. So I think, um, depending on what the price action is, obviously today. Uh, but uh, you know, a couple a couple of things that I'm I'm following. You know, I have the Aussie, and I'm I am long the Aussie dollar. I love the false breakdown below the lows. Uh, I think that we can get a move back to 68.50 or like the 200-day moving average. I think this is quite possible over the next week. Um, that would go um, along the um, uh, you know theory that uh, that you know the stock market could you know continue higher. That I think that the um, hold on really quick. Uh, looks like Steve is not going to be able to be here. Uh, 
uh, looks like Steve's not going to be here today. So if he's not going to be here, I'm going to have to uh, cover for him a little bit. Um, but I'll but I'll switch on and off between myself and Stelios, and you know let's let Stelios talk and, um, and let's see if we can if if anybody else wants to pop in. Matter of fact, if uh, if Paul Franco wanted to come in uh, for a little bit, he might he might pop in for a little bit as well. But uh, sorry, getting back to the Aussie. So looking looking at the Aussie, I think that we broke this downtrend line. We had this big move overnight with the uh, RBNZ and the RBNZ. Um, they 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 kept rates unchanged, but more more importantly, it's the less dovish stance that they took. And I think this specific um, uh, action. Uh, especially, you know, kind of dismissive of the coronavirus, uh, has has really led to a reversal in the Kiwi, and this has to have caught a lot of people off guard because I think a lot of traders were looking for a, a much bigger sell off in the Kiwi. Now, I was prepared for the New Zealand dollar strength while well, I was, you know, thinking they weren't going to be as dovish as they were, but they were actually a lot of people actually viewed them as relatively hawkish. So the, this Kiwi move is obviously weighing into, um, uh, hold on really quick. Uh, uh, why can't I see, excuse me one second guys. Uh, sorry. I'm, I'm try I was trying to make an adjustment here on the fly, but it's not working. Um, so, uh, so anyway, the Kiwi looks like we're going to squeeze right past the 200 day moving average. And that should, that should weigh positively in what I think the Aussie dollar is doing as well. One of the other, one of the other charts that you should be paying attention to if you're trading the long Aussie dollar, like I am, is keep an eye on copper. Uh, copper has, uh, you know, we have a very similar situation to, to the Aussie dollar where we made a new or close to new low like as a new closing low right so now copper if we can get above like 265 um you know and, and take out the 200 day moving average that would be quite bullish for copper and i think it's going to weigh in on the rally that we're seeing in uh the, in the aussie now one of the other things i, I want to and then i'm going to go i want to do a little work on the canadian dollar so just give me a second um I got to go back to the euro dollar because uh, one of you know one of the comments that we got you know in the chat room is wow the, the Aussie still or excuse me the euro is still heavy um, the euro is heavy but one of the reasons what's one of the reasons why it's probably going to stay heavy and it's any type of recovery is going to be very shallow is because equities continue to move higher as long as equities are continuing to move higher there's no reason for anyone who is who who's who's short the euro dollar especially using it as a funding currency there's no reason why they should cover it matter of fact you're going to probably see more traders piling into uh euro like euro aussie shorts that are that you know we're back below the 200 day moving average the euro new zealand which obviously fell because of the rbnz but you're going to see more traders piling onto this this trade on the short side because as long as stocks continue to 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 grind it out to the upside and you know quite possibly blast higher you're just going to get traders that want to continue to uh, sell euros and and use those proceeds as a funding currency to buy other currencies like the Aussie, like the Kiwi. So um, like I said, any bounce that you see in the Euro dollar is probably going to be fairly short lived. Now I wanted to do a little work on the dollar Canadian really quick because the dollar Canadian brushing up against really key resistance. Now let me, let me remove this line here and uh, actually let me remove this line here. I'm going to remove a couple of things. Okay. Now, one of the one of the reasons why I'd been so bullish the dollar Canadian for the last few weeks is that we had this false breakdown, um, this multi-year trend line, 
you know you can see it spawns back from uh, mid 17 uh, we broke it everybody got bearish towards the end of last year it reversed and uh, we reversed you know to, to test the other the other multi-year trend line that goes from 2016 you know we came right into that resistance now um, it doesn't surprise me that we're holding right now not at all but what I do think is going to happen is I do think it's eventually going to break higher. I do think we're going to break above this resistance, but I do think that we're going to get a better price for possible longs. I have no Canadian exposure right now, just so you guys know. I don't, I'm not short any Canadian currency. I really want to be, um, but I just don't want to do it right up against this resistance. So now the question is, where can I be a buyer of the dollar Canadian? Because if I think that this is solid support and I think this is solid resistance, now I can go, okay, well, you know, where's the turning point? You know, where do we actually turn? And let me, let me make that darker so we can actually see. Not the even a bottle of Crown Royal in a purple velvet sack. <laughs> Canadian exposure at all, buddy? No. Well, I always have a bottle of Crown in my bar. Oh, all right. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I, I right. you have, have a Canadian little Canadian exposure, <laughs> and I guess I, I have some maple syrup in my. Uh, it's my in, favorite in my fridge because yeah, we, right. my wife oh, yeah. only allows me to buy, which really sucks, uh, because I'm a I'm a Mrs. Butterworth's fan. Oh, because, but yeah. Hey, you know when you grow up on the stuff, I know it's comfort food. Yeah. It's comfort yeah. food, so yeah. I, I don't mind the corn syrup, and I know it's really <laughs> bad for you and all this other stuff. But she makes me buy the maple stuff. We go to Costco and buy the vat of syrup, and uh, yeah. which stinks. Well, you know, behind every great man is a greater woman. <laughs> That's right. I, I I actually like the taste of corn syrup. What can I say? <laughs> That's very. Um, very bad I, you're anyway. forgiven yeah so you know i'm looking i'm looking at this dollar canadian and and like i said i'm i'm more interested in actually looking for a place to buy it but that doesn't mean it can't go down and matter of fact uh, i think the better trade right now is with equities <laughs> as strong as they are dale yeah because you you can short the dollar canadian uh, yeah. or play the canadian to the long side now what i'm thinking personally is I think that the dollar Canadian can come back down here to the 38% retracement. Now, if you think about this, this is the old trend line, right? Yeah. Okay. So the 38% retracement really coincides with that. You know, you think about like over the next couple of days, we slice through the 200 day moving average, everybody gets all bearish, you know, oh, here comes the dollar Canadian, it's coming back down again. And you know, it slices through the 200-day moving average. Everybody gets more bearish. Then we hit the 38% retracement, and you use this as an area. Whoops. Yeah. As an area, as a as a as a level for longs. At least I could give it a uh, an opportunity to be on the long side down there and limit my risk, or rather, put in a relatively tight stop. Uh, if I get triggered for a long, but it, again, this all coincides with uh, playing the long commodity type of trade. I'm already long Aussie dollars. I don't necessarily feel the desire to be long both Australian and Canadian currencies. Um, so let's imagine that the Aussie continues to rally, and over the next couple of days, we make it you know above 68 cents. Let's just you know I'm gonna. I don't know what I was drawing here. So it's, oh, so let's I just say Greg was looking for that, Blake. What's that? Like Greg was looking for that when he was here the other day in ABC and then down again in Aussie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I, and, and I'm, I'm you, you guys know I'm not an Elliott Wave guy, but, and that's why we have Greg here. So let's uh, take a look at his Aussie analysis. So, yeah, he was looking for a move, um, you know, quite possibly, uh, well, he's, he's talking 67.53, yeah. which we're almost there. So if that doesn't turn here and it continues higher, then that would take us past the 50%, uh, which comes in at 68 cents and maybe even, you know, yeah. I, he's looking at a full 100% here. But I, I, I think... Um, 
more than likely, if we continue to rally in the Aussie dollar, the failure point is going to be up towards 68 to 68.50. But if that's the case, then that means that the, the dollar Canadian is probably coming down, you know, as, as you see it right now, it's probably coming down uh, in sympathy or, or, or in the, you know, in the same vein. So also have a, you have a little strength in the energy market right now too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, look at crude oil. I mean, crude, crude, crude looks like it's going to bounce. I, 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 um, if you, if you read the analysis on, um, on Forex analytics, so let's find crude. Here's crude, just basic technical analysis. This is the analysis that I, uh, that I, uh, uh, you know, I write out for you, but, um, the fact that we made lower or uh, higher lows, okay, we take out this fifty-two dollar level, which we're at fifty-one oh four right now. So we're we're trading right here. Um, you know, we take out fifty-two, and then you know we're probably going to make our way back towards the mid fifties. That that seems realistic to me. And and if crude continues to rally, uh, and remember going back to this chart, this is also it would be a false breakdown, right? Yeah, it, it it already is kind of developing into a false breakdown. So a false breakdown tends to lead to a reversal, um, and in this case, could maybe lead us back towards the mid fifties. So a, a move to the mid fifties would put the dollar Canadian probably back down here towards you know one thirty two, one thirty one eighty. And like I said, I'm more interested in buying the dollar Canadian down at those levels. Um, you know, if, if I didn't have the Aussie exposure that I have. Um, you know, maybe shorting the do the dollar Canadian would be the play I would take. But uh, since I've already got Aussie exposure, let I it come to you. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I'd rather you know just try to play it down here. There's, yeah, you know, there's a lot of support down here. So you can see through here. There's a lot of you know previous resistance. Uh, it's it's going to be some support down here. So I'm more interested in the long side, like I said, down there. Um, Let's uh, really quick, and then I'll, I'll bring in Stelios to see if he has any comments here. Uh, the U.S. dollar Mexican peso is trading pretty heavy. I played this on the long side last week. I played some of the squeeze, um, but I'm a little nervous as equities continue to rally. It's like, okay, um, you know what's going to, you know what's going to. Uh, stop the U.S. dollar Mexican peso from not making another push down towards, you know, maybe 1840. This, this is, it is Wednesday, right? Today? Yeah, buddy. All right. Well, this is oh. also triple rollover day. No one wants to be long the dollar Mexican peso going into this evening. No one. Uh, so, you know, chances are you're going to get this, you know, kind of downward pressure all day long. So, today selling rallies seems very logical to me because you know why 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 um you know why be on the long side when you're just going to get dinged with major major rollover charges today so i would use any rally as a as an opportunity to be a, a seller all right so Anyway, I wanted to bring in Stelios for a few minutes, see how Stel's doing. Stelios, Hello. what's uh, going on today? Good morning. I'm very well, thank you. Hey, Stel. Hey, how are you guys doing? Um, okay, uh, actually, I can uh, show a few charts as well, so I can take uh, 10 minutes or so if you want to. Uh, Let's do it. No I'm here. Okay. Um, so, first of all, the uh, let me take the screen. Uh, share. Best of one. And here we go. Everyone get out their telescope. This is macro. <laughs> First of all, uh, data-wise, we had uh, Euro uh, Eurozone industrial production much more negative than expected. Yet another nail in the coffin, I think. It just, uh, it's just a bunch of bad numbers. And it kind of makes sense because the Eurozone was already um, slowly shifting. Uh, I want to say into recession, not yet, but, you know, towards that direction. And uh, obviously the coronavirus developments and the kind of slow down and, and complete grind to a halt of a global economy uh, due to China is, uh, is going gonna to take effect uh, for sure, even though the 
the equity markets don't believe so. Uh, it's actually funny because, you know, oil has been has sold off, what, over $10 on this uh, coronavirus. Uh, and, you know, it, it makes sense because the demand is dropping. Um, it, it's it's going to be a negative um, effect for sure, but stocks don't actually care. So um, let me start with, um, let me start with the dollar. Actually, let's, let's have a look at this chart first. Um, so hey, US Stelios, dollar, yes. I know you're speaking, um, just uh, do me a favor. Um, yep. g- give, me, give me 10 minutes. I just got to do a couple things uh, yeah, yeah. for my family and I'll be right back. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'll take 10 minutes, no worries. Thank no you, worries. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Hey, good. The two of us. <laughs> Just the two of us. Um, <laughs> I'm not a good singer. Okay. Um, so the dollar. <laughs> if we look at the dollar, this is not the DXY. DXY, remember, is 50% euro. So that's heavily skewed towards the euro. The US dollar index is much more neutral. Uh, to uh, It's actually a, a much better balance across uh, one, one number of currencies. And DXY is 50% euro because it used to be Deutsche Mark, Frank, Lira, whatever, and they all got lumped into euro. So if you look at the US dollar, we look at this point here, which is end of 18. Where is it? Somewhere around this peak here. The US dollar index was around 12,300. That's when the Fed did this uh, 180 degree turn. They turned very dovish. Uh, the market went from pricing four hikes, I think it was in 2019, to none. And then they actually de- delivered three cuts. So that theoretically is a big negative for the dollar. You know, whenever um, monetary policy shifts from hawkish to, um, to dovish and rates go lower, theoretically the currency will depreciate. What has uh, the US dollar done? It's actually done nothing. Actually, no, it's uh, 80 points higher. So the dollar has been lagging uh, or has been stronger than expected uh, over the past year, year and a half, Uh, probably um, due to the performance of the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy has been a bit hit and miss. Some numbers have been very good, like employment has been good. But, you know, show me a country which doesn't have good unemployment figures. You know, UK is almost in the uh, all-time lows in unemployment. Even the Eurozone is now slowly dropping. You know, the Eurozone with countries like Greece where youth unemployment is 50%. So uh, employment has been strong in the US. Inflation has not been doing that well. A core PC, which is the Fed's favorite metric, touched 2%, which is their target, uh, a year and a half ago, or whatever it was, and then it's come back down to 1.6% or 1.5%, and it stays there. It's not doing anything. So inflation is not uh, at target. Uh, employment, we said, is good. GDP is good, but it's uh, slowly dropping. You know, we're not going to be anywhere near 3% uh, yearly growth that uh, Trump is uh, touting. Um, so, And leading indicators have been dropping in the US. So the economy has been... I, I, it's not strong, but it's not weak either. It's kind of been hit and miss. Uh, but the dollar has been very resilient uh, over the past uh, year, year and a bit. So um, now if we go down to, if we go back to dollar yen, which is one of my favorites, we've been, uh, well, we've been with trading within this wedge for what, what is it? Three years now, almost four. And there's going to be, there's going to be a decision at some point because this is tightening and tightening. My view is that the dollar again is going to break lower. Um, and I think that will probably coincide with the, uh, with the risk of uh, move. The you know, equities and, and assets in general, they've been trading very well over the past years. And I, th- I personally think they're running on fumes now. I mean, this, like they say, just follow the price action and don't get in the way in the Fed, of the Fed. But eventually you can't get away from fundamentals and valuations are stretched. We have all these dangers in the world that the markets are just casually uh, ignoring uh, and just doesn't make any sense. I've been wanting to short equity markets for a couple of years now. I haven't done it. Um, uh, thank God. But uh, I think there will be a trigger. Um, I, th- uh, I used to think that the trigger would have been higher rates, just like in uh, 2018, the, the little, was it, 20% move we saw lower in equities. But higher yields, I think uh, we're now very, very far away from that. I don't see how yields are going to get higher. So there's going to be some other um, trigger. Will it be this virus, uh, you know, getting bigger and bigger? You know, are they telling us the truth? Are they not? I don't know. But uh, 
theoretically, the effect of um, the slowdown in China and this basically grind, China is grinding into a halt um, should be felt in corporate uh, America, you know, in, in companies, you know, it, imports are going to become more expensive because they can't import stuff from China anymore or they, they, they can't for a while. So I think we, we're going to feel that at some point. So I think dollar yen is, is really, really coiling here. And uh, I think um, Blake has been saying about the 110 level uh, for a long time. I think 110 is a really good risk reward um, short. You know, you short that, you, you take 40 pips of, uh, of a stop or something like that. And if you get it right, you're going to be going all the way to 106 or something like that. That's, you know, it's my humble opinion. So I like this. Um, I like this a lot. Um, also, cable. Cable has been... Uh, trading pretty erratically over the past couple of years and makes sense because of all the developments in the in Brexit. Now we have some kind of, um, we're moving forward in Brexit uh, in terms of UK is now out of the European Union, but we don't know the details that are of the associated uh, trade agreements, if any. So cable, I think, uh, and I've said this in the chat room for the past few days, as long as we stay below this trend line, I think cable is going to be trading uh, bearish. But... My long-term view, my medium-term view, say five years from now for, for sterling, is positive. I think um, uh, eventually there's going to be some kind of uh, trade agreement. I don't know what's going to entail, but I, I find the possibility of a no deal, of, of a basically a clean break, I find it a, a, to be a low probability event, uh, simply because both sides have vested interest in this. Gra okay, granted, the EU want to show, uh, to make the UK an example and uh, show that, look, if you leave the European Union, then, uh, you know, you're on your own and you're going to find all sorts of obstacles. But I think in the end, logic will prevail simply because it's just too much money involved, too much, uh, you know, the, the UK uh, and, and the EU, uh, the EU is the UK's number one trading partner and vice versa. You know, it's, it's, it's a big it's, it's a big um, relationship that they have. So I think the, the pound will, in the medium term, go higher. Uh, in the short term, we could very easily go back towards the one to low 120s if we see, you know, it's all about headlines. It's all about progress made or not being made. So um, if, uh, you know, it's, it's quite probable we might go lower, but I will be looking for this break. And I, I predict it's going to be somewhere around, you know, in the summer, and I think that area around 131, 132, I think that's where it's going to happen. And if that happens, that is when I'm going to get a long cable. What kind of magnitude move out of that triangle still? Oh, I think, well, I think a move out of this triangle will mean a positive uh, right. scenario, a positive outcome. So I think 140 will be these highs here. Of, what is it? 142. I think those, this is going to be the first target. Uh, okay. I think it could go much higher than that, but I think a first realistic target is from 131, 132 to 141, 142. So okay. yeah, it's, a, it's a big, yeah, it's a, it's a big way. It, it's a long way to go, but I think, you know, we've seen how cable trades. It's, uh, it can be absolutely mental. So um, that's my view on... Great uh, to see some weekly views. What yeah, else you got? Every now and then, oil is another one I was, uh, I've been looking at and I've been uh, talking in the <clears> chat room about it. Uh, and this is one that I wanted to get long. I actually missed it by just a little bit. I wanted oil to get to this trend line, which was about 49 or something like that. It got to 49.40. I think I had my bids there. They didn't get filled. I think this this is a, it's a really good level. We've had these lows three, four times here. And a, a false breakdown of this tiny, this little area here would be perfect. You know, you've seen this a yeah. million times. It tries, it tries, it breaks, apparently breaks, and then it comes right back up. And I think if we do is, break above... Is that the 52 number? Back above yeah, it, 52? Yes. Okay, yes, 52. all right. And I think, you know, OPEC is in the, in the picture. They're talking, they're not doing anything, but we know how they, are re they react. They can, they can be quite decisive when needed. So uh, will they limit uh, production more? I think it's very possible. You know, if, if, if the Clampus are uh, cutting back on their production. Yep, yep. You know who the Jed and Jethro? The Clampus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, what movie was that? Beverly that was, uh, Hillbillies. Beverly Hillbillies, yeah, that was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're cutting so, back on their production. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's another good risk-reward trade. Uh, and because, you know, either this situation will persist 
or it's going to be um, a non-event. So, it, or otherwise, you know, within a month or two, everything's going to be all, well on their way of being back to normal. You can't have it both ways. So either equities are going to start uh, rolling over or um, if things get better, then oil has to bounce. So um, that's another thing. And obviously talking about oil, we can't not talk about um, uh, Norway. And Euro Norway's one is a short I have on. Uh, I'm actually out of the money now a little bit, but uh, you know it's it's been a very frustrating trade. At least you get one percent carry, which is nice. But um, you know you have this double top up here. You have RSI divergence. So you know I like this. I want to see how it's going to behave uh, going down of the uh, going under this zone here, or if it's going to break or not. But here, you know, there's a big big area that if breached, uh, I think there's just clean air uh, below, and that could. Um, um, uh, coincide with a rally in oil and uh, you know it's, it's something that I'm definitely looking at and I have been looking at for a while. Uh, we had the risk, Riksbank today, speaking about Norway, we had the Riksbank which um, uh, met today, they kept rates on change at 0%. Remember last time they hiked from minus, what was it, minus 0.1 I think, they went to zero and effectively telling the world that negative rates don't work, um, which I agree. Uh, so, um, uh, Riksbank today, well, they were not dovish, so the, the Swedish kroner rallied a little bit and the Norwegian kroner rallied as well in sympathy. They kind of tend to go hand in hand, those two. Um, so, that's, uh, that's another one I look at. Uh, what else? Uh, Polly is uh, in the house. Paul is in the house? Know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if... Uh, if you like, know. Okay. Uh, if... Um, Oh, well, let me talk about gold as well. And then maybe if he wants to take five or 10 minutes and then uh, I'll probably take us to the end of the, of the hour. Um, so gold, gold has been a, a tricky one. I remember the big breakout point was this here, 1360-ish. Uh, we all talked about it. It was, um, if you look at the chart over three years back, is once, twice, three times a lady. <laughs> three times <laughs> it tried to break, <laughs> didn't. And when the break happened, we were, we were for people who, who listened to our um, webinar, we were all quite firm in being bullish gold here. And uh, I actually thought we might get a pullback towards the breakout point, especially at this point here. I thought we might get a pullback down, which would have been a gift to get long again. We didn't get that, but we seem to be on a, on a kind of a upsloping channel. I think... Um, there is a possibility that gold might drop a little bit towards the bottom end of this channel. If it does, I'm going to be buying it. I am not long gold. I am long silver still uh, and plan to keep that for sure. But um, gold, you know, given the global developments, given that nobody's hiking anywhere, rates are going to stay low. Um, the global economy is, is sluggish to say the least. Um, uh, deficits, Every year, US, UK, Japan, everybody creating deficits. I don't see how in, in a medium term uh, uh, horizon, gold can go lower unless they have, mine an asteroid or something. Uh, I been, think. Haven't you been surprised how strong gold has been in the face of the equity markets? I mean, it, to me, it's quite staggering and it's yes. telling that at some point gold is going to rip people's heads off, in my opinion. Yes, I think so. the markets are telling us something's wrong. The equity markets are rallying. Gold is very resilient when it should be going lower. And dollar yen cannot rally. So one of these things is wrong. And I personally think it's equities, but obviously you can't get and, ahead. And, and bonds, I know they're down today, but bonds are strong too. I mean, it's, it, yes. and, and you're right. There was, um, you know, the, there's, there's, there is a lot of, um, speculation that you know these the the coronavirus numbers that we get are are you know not correct and you know china's under reporting which i mean it looks pretty suspicious given the fact that we have just a consistent yeah. slow grind higher or you know now it's starting to peak um it seems very managed to me but i think if we start getting some indications from different countries if it made its way out of or across China's borders and maybe start to worsen a little bit in other places, then, then, then I think it's, you know, it'll be very worrisome. Larry yeah. Williams used to say that when gold and the market are going up together, 
<clears throat> that it's not healthy. Gold is like uh, is saying when it's going up with the market that there, you know, it's got a temperature or a fever. It's not <laughs> a healthy advance with gold advancing with it. That that makes a lot of sense. Hey, um, Stelios, I want to I, I want to thank you for stepping in for so long. I, my uh, my wife has been bat. For those of you that do not know, she's been battling the um, the flu for the last week and a half, and so I've I've had to take on a lot of Mister Mom duties. I, and I and I shouldn't say Mister Mom because I, yeah. I just I yeah mean, boys you but, you don't go to the door with a chainsaw when a girl comes to see Roman <laughs> or well, Christian, the, the, do you? The fact of the matter is I, I I've taken on a lot of duties <laughs> that I I just uh, usually don't have um, when you know we're trying to get the kids out of the out of the uh, out of the house. So. Um, and it's just the one of the benefits of working from home. But although, although if I wasn't working from home and I was actually driving to an office like my uh, colleagues in Connecticut, uh, I would probably be staying home and doing what I'm doing here. So, uh, but the the thing is, I had to I had to tend to some of those tend to some of those duties really quick. Uh, but Paul Franco is going to join us for a few minutes. Uh, probably the last 15 minutes here. And um, I want to, I want to tell you guys a little bit something about Paul. So um, for those of you that do not know who, who, it, who, who Paul is, um, first of all, Pauly or SPZ trader, I've known him from Twitter for probably about a decade, uh, about, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago. Uh, I brought him on, um, the uh the the wise trade team um before we were purchased by ally financial um you know and he 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 actually continued on with them for for a little longer after i broke off and started forex analytics um but the reason why i brought paul franco along back then is because i knew he traded for a living and the guy's a he's a survivor he's a fighter he's a scalper um, and he's a damn good trader. And so I knew, and, and at Ally Financial, we didn't pay, we paid him, you know, a contractor's fee, which isn't very much. So I knew he had always made his money in the markets. And even with Forex Analytics, it's not like we, we, <laughs> we pay him just a little bit. So I know he's making his money in the markets. Um, and and the, he's the kind of guy you want to listen to because he understands the levels where the market's inflection points are. He knows how to play them. And um, that's why I love having him on the team. Anyway, he does the, uh, the, the, um, the European crossover session uh, for the Forex Analytics clients. Uh, you can listen to his webinars after the fact, but if you're part of the Forex Analytics community and you're in Europe or you can listen to the European crossover, Make sure you do so because Paul Franco is, uh, and he also provides a, a lot of the, a, a lot if not most of the Asian analysis uh, every night uh, for a lot of the majors. So, um, Paul, we're going to bring him on so he can uh, maybe wrap us up and and show us what he's looking at going into the North American session. Paul, you you around? Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me? Hey, Paulie. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, hey, I've thanks here for, for thanks for stepping in. I know Steve had to go tend to a. Uh, sometime life hits you and uh, hits you at the most unexpe unexpected moments. And it was a very uh, unexpected, hey, guys, I, I have to step away. Um, and Polly, uh, you know, said, hey, I can be I can be here. So um, so you guys are all in for a treat before before Dale goes on to his interview. So, um, Polly, what you looking at today? Uh, actually, uh, Stelius was talking about the crude, and actually, that's what I was looking at right now is the crude. I mean, I, we did with the. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm allowing you to grab the chart so you can okay, bear with show me everybody what you're talking about. You're allowing me. That sounds, the... sounds very patronizing. <laughs> <laughs> actually, uh, and we've done the European crossover one, and Blake mentions uh, what we do, and just for those that don't know, is we do go on and cover, um, we're going to move this all the way and move the crude out just rather quickly. So we go on and cover uh, all the, ma the, the majors here, and then we step into the cross rates here, where it's going to be the New Zealand yen, Euro yen, Euro Aussie, uh, the guppy, the sterling odd. 
Um, so we go and hit those and we start out with a little bit of news for the day and then we go on and uh, take a look at uh, the economic reports. So we kind of set ourselves up because the, the uh, European crossover webinar is more geared towards scalping or short-term trading. So we'll go on and have like, like yesterday, uh, we had had our head, at least for me, my head and shoulders target yesterday was for 919 on the Euro. Amanda had 898. And uh, so we had our support yesterday at uh, 897. We had a level there on the daily, the low was 892. And then um, our resistance, I think was like 934 or something like the high was 925, I think. So it's more geared towards, my point is it's geared towards very, very short term, short term trading. Uh, although, like I said, not everybody in the chat room, everybody has their own style. A lot of great traders in the chat room, but lots of times what they'll do is they'll incorporate the use of the, uh, bias chart for the day, incorporate, incorporate those with their own levels of what they're looking into for entries or exits. Um, so that's the take on that. But I want to go and touch on the uh, crude oil, which I do follow quite a bit, and I do scalp a lot on the crude oil. And Stelios had mentioned the uh, crude oil, and we'll kind of open this up a little bit here. Um, and he had mentioned, uh, you know, when I get, went and got uh, sub 50, and I've just taken a look here uh, and this is going to be here on the daily chart. And we're coming up, you can see here, this 51.21 I had marked off. We actually just made it up there and we paired back a bit. And you'll see where that 51.21 came in. Let me go and pull this up. Um, bear with me. That's actually the 61%, the 51.14. So we made a run up here to this 51.21 and we paired back. But Stelius made a good uh, good. Uh, uh, take on that is that when it kept dipping below $50, we kept holding and holding. It was just like the it was, uh, Blake's take about the beach ball. You can't hold it underwater. And I'm looking for potentially for this market to go on and, and as he's saying, start to turn around. If you look at it on a weekly basis, the key is going to be if once we can get above 52.62, we'll uh, have a definitive bottom in place, or at least I believe we'll have a definitive bottom in place. Today, um, as we start to uh, make a run up here, you can see here the key level is going to be this 5127 right here. We actually have some uh, volume sitting in here, and I'll go in and show you one of the tools that I also go in and use. Um, I notice a lot of your levels, Polly, um, incorporate um, passing through wicks, trying to attack where the bodies are at of those candles. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you're correct on that, and I, I'll tell you what. Um, one of the things, and, and uh, it's an excellent point that you bring up, and you're, you're right, I do that, and you'll see where the market lots of times will we'll go in and hold a level there. We saw that uh, essentially yesterday, even with the euro. I'll give you an example. Um, if we kind of stick around towards FX. So let's go in and just pull up the euro real quickly on the daily, and I'll give you an example. Whether it's on the daily, whether it's on a, um, bear with me, So a lot of times where I come up with these levels, as, as you can see here, uh, as Blake says, the wicks, either the opens or the close, and I'll find those, you know, resistance with that it's going to be key, whether the market can get back above there. Yesterday, we had our bias chart support at 897. The low for the day was 892. But like I said, we had, my thoughts were with the euro, and it's just barely hanging on, was we'd had six straight days down here on the euro. And so I thought uh, with the head and shoulders target, would probably a lot of shorts would come off and the analysis I had coming into the week jumping all over the place was I thought we'd run the bulls I put on there ran the bulls out of dodge so I didn't think that there was any bulls sticking around that we're going to have to be they were still trying to defend this market so once we got into that head and shoulders target area and I think Blake has lower but I had 919 Amanda had 898 so Mox Nick's right there in the same place but our support was here and the reason I put it through the wicks and, and um, I think it's important or is very helpful, especially with FX. As you know, with, with futures, you can look at volume. A lot of people look at, at volume analysis. You don't really have that in the FX cash market. But my take is when you look at these, these uh, bodies, where, which is where I like to put in the close. I'll give you an example. Look at 1170. You can see here, the close here, the close here, and you can see how the market's trying to pop its head above this 1170 can't do it it gets above there but it doesn't close it doesn't fill the bill same thing here the last run up basically the last hurrah on the right shoulder can't close above can't seal the deal above 11 1170 and to me 
when you look at those bodies, that tells you, and I've said this before on a couple of webinars, to me, that's basically your put up or shut up time because that's going to be essentially your close. So whether you're looking at a 30 minute, you're looking at an hourly or a daily, this is where folks have to say, okay, well, you know, uh, I'm long here, or I'm short. If it closes above those body, I got to get out. You've heard them say, you know what, I got to get out if it takes us the previous day's close or the, that week's that week's close. And so that's why I put them through here. And I think that there's a lot of volume there. So with FX, we don't have volume analysis. We can't really say, okay, there's this much volume. I mean, you can look at the futures contracts like the 6E or 6B, depending on what you're trading. But once again, for real volume, we don't really have that. So it's one of the reasons why I like to put my my uh, support here and resistance. I, I always even want to do the, the uh, diagonal um, uh, trends, uh, trend lines. I'll, same thing, I'll do them through the body. And you can see here, we rallied up here, we came up a little bit short. And look at this key level that held in place. That's at 10, right there, 10.52. And you can see here, once again, the bodies here coming across, a couple of stabs. We still can't take it out. And we come up here to go and fail. And that's also this trend line. And then we roll over for six straight days. So just to touch base on that, what Blake was referring to, that's the reason I go on and, and do that. Uh, but that makes a lot back, of sense. But getting back to the crude oil, um, yeah, I think we're in a, a key area here. If you're coming into this morning, though, I think uh, we came up here to this 51.14. We actually made a run up here, and then we saw the market going in pair back. I think the key level is right now, it's just going to be this 51.27. And I'll even give you an example. Uh, one of the tools I'll use when I'm, I'm trading that or, or for scalping it, I was actually scalping a little bit in Asia. Um, you can see here, look look how it coincides here. So let me move this out of the way. So here's the 51.14. Here's that 51.27. You can see these touches. So you're thinking, okay, well, he's just running them across the body. Well, look at the amount of volume that's sitting right there at 51.20. Got 179 contracts right there sitting and actually had a little even more. They're building it up a little bit. But you can see here, as so we made that run up here to 51.14, uh, 51 which let's show you right here. You see here the 61%. We came up here, had a pretty good little volume. The, the thickness of this suggests how much volume is being traded. And then we saw the market going dip back at here to 51. Doesn't sound like a whole lot, but we'd already run up quite a bit. You can see here, look, since the Asian session, this thing had just been on a tear. So once we ended up to 51.14, um, the market paired back. It looks like we're going to tra trade one more stab up here. Here's 51.20. And at 51.27, we're talking about at 51.32, uh, actually, you have 125 contracts. So I'm thinking we may just jump up in here, take out those highs. And then even if we don't, um, uh, eventually, we'll, I think we'll go higher. But I think this is going to be a good area for a resting point. And the volume is telling you here, you got 100 contracts here, almost 200 at 51.20, which takes out the highs by just about two cents. And then right at that 51.27, just a little bit above that, 125 contracts. So the thing is, is uh, my point is, is that I think this level, you can see it where it's touching across you see here. It's, and the way I look at it, um, just to briefly touch on this here is when we come down to this 51.27, you can see there's a battle zone. They're really fighting here, back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, the bears went out, so we break lower. Where do we come back? We visit 51.27 again. We fall back. We get above it and like, okay, finally, we've cleared the mountain. And we turn, the guy falls down and slides right back down the mountain. And then look, we've got another good battlefield right at 51.27. So when you move, or if you want to call it extrapolate out to where we are right now, 5127 makes a lot of sense where the market may go in and run out of gas. And you look on here, what do we have? 5120, 200 contracts are here. 5130, they are starting to take away some of the volume here, so we'll see what happens. But it makes a, a logical area where the market may want to take a pause here at that point and come back. But certainly the trend's going this way, and I've learned the hard way. You definitely don't want to stay in the weight of accrued. And Stelios, he, that's correct. I remember him saying about almost two weeks ago, I was saying, boy, I'm going to be buying under $50. I'm going to be buying under $50. And I was wondering if somewhere he hadn't already gotten filled in here. But uh, you can see here the market has been, you know, continuing to push higher. And uh, some of these moves down here, I would, I think it was like a few days ago, I would only play from the long side. And even if it was only scalps, because I kept thinking, I don't want to get run out of, I don't want to get run over. We still kept, we would dip a little bit here. But now it looks like we're trying to move a little bit higher. I know Russia is still saying that they're thinking about, but they really don't want to cut. But like I said, it'll only take 
a little bit of news and this thing will probably move a little bit higher there. Well, well, Paul, I want to, I want to thank you for stepping in today because uh, coach has a, um, he has an interview that actually uh, uh, there was a family emergency, so I don't, uh, but I oh, tell you okay. what, Paulie, I have a great name for our new company called bachelors FX. And the tagline is only the body counts. <laughs> there you go uh, what right. do you think man that's great hey guys uh, I, I have to step out but all right blake thanks for stepping in today uh, yeah coach, thank you paulie thank you. and um and thanks Stel. for being here i'll thanks, let you paulie. wrap it up thank okay, you. Yes. great look Stell. all right everyone i peter goodburn tomorrow so uh see everyone in members chat uh i've been dropping in there say hello to everyone so have a great day trading. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings, and we'll see everyone tomorrow or in members chat, okay? Oh, you're very welcome, Brock, Monica, Shahab, my trading warrior brothers and sisters. See you tomorrow. Adios.